Hey everyone, Brandon here with Shepherd Tactical Supply. Today we're going to go over the installation of the half by 28 thread adapter for Smith & Wesson models 422, 622, 2206, and 2214. It's a lot of numbers. But I have a 422. I love this thing. But we're going to be updating it. We're going to be chopping the front side, putting a pick rail on the top. <clears throat> but I wanted it to be able to mount a suppressor. And finding the 422 with that factory threaded barrel is about as rare as hen's teeth. So, stumbled upon EWK Arms, and he makes something else uh, that I plan to uh, work a collaboration with him in the future, um, probably towards the summer next year, once we get some funds up. He already makes a tool, which is a uh, barrel nut wrench for the Chiapas, and I've always wanted to make a muzzle brake for them think it'd look cool think it'd be functional just be something that would be really really neat to see so he's already defined the tool made it works wonderfully so i'm going to start working on uh, muzzle brake design and then we will package that all together anyway that's far in the future right now I, if you let me i'll talk all day so here we are tools you're going to need you're going to need brass polymer hammer you're going to need 7 16 box end, open end, adjustable wrench, something. You'll need a wrench. And you're going to need a fat wrench or something similar that does inch pounds, not pounds, inch pounds of torque. And you're going to need a one quarter drive adapter. Now, I took one of my older rusty tools, uh, cleaned it up some, and just cut the little nub off. And it works perfect because. The way that this piece is designed, yeah, I've already installed it and taken it off, so I can do this for you guys. Um, installation. Now, obviously, you don't drive it all the way in like that, but the way he's done that is the threading stops about a half inch from the end. Quarter inch drive. Brilliant. Brilliant design. I love it. I love tools and parts that are simplistic and easy for the end user to use and are the kind of thing that I look at as a parts maker and go, shit, why didn't I think of that? Anyway, barrel nut. Now, you need to keep constant downward pressure. I kind of cheated that. Why would you need the hammer, Brandon? Well, we're going to cheat. We're going to tap with the polymer side just to get it seated down in there because you're going to have variances in these barrel nuts. you got to remember, this is a gun that was... <clears throat> manufactured for about a decade uh, from the mid 80s to the mid 90s and then it was stopped um, and now I think is it the 241 41 the model 41 is their competition 22 version of this so technically it's still made but it's not you know what I'm saying all right so get your 7 16 on there keep pushing down on it and just start lefty loosey in it now yours is probably going to be a little tighter. This is like the eighth take, and I've also already put this on. But when it gets to the point where you can just push in and turn, go ahead and do that. Now, as you can see, I'll leave this back for a second, and I'll show you what I was talking about. The barrel's moving. That is because this particular barrel, and it's under a spring load, well, not necessarily, well it is, but it is held in place by tension, okay? So the barrel nut and this lock washer were what was holding the barrel in place, tighten it down, puts proper tension on. Now you're not gonna use the lock washer, okay? Because the lock washer, or correction, the adapter, is the length of the fully crushed lock, wash, lock washer, for some reason that's hard for me to say today, and the original barrel nut. So that's why it's important you don't put it back in. It's going to not line things up correctly. So that's why it's very important you use a Wheeler fat wrench or something similar and only adjust to inch pounds of torque. If you got a little snap on, Harbor Freight, it doesn't matter as long as it's inch pounds, not foot pounds, inch pounds of torque. All right, so I like to start, obviously we're gonna leave our slide forward, pushed forward, 
So we've got positive pressure pushing the barrel forward. My brain went kind of dumb for a second there. All right, now I like to hand tighten it all the way down first. Then I'm going to take my wheeler. And I'm not going to go all the way in. I don't want to touch the barrel. So if you feel yourself touching the barrel, back it off to where you can feel it's just inside. And then we're going to, oh, damn it. One, two, three. All right, here, 25 inch pounds of torque. And that's important because as I showed you, the barrel moves inside this housing. So if you over tighten or under tighten it, you're gonna change your point of impact. And that's it guys, that's it. Now she is suppressor ready and I cannot wait to get one of our JK armament suppressors and stick her on here and just see how quiet this gun is. It's gonna be fun. But that's gonna wrap this one up, guys. Like I said, uh, I'm already talking to the owner of EWK Arms. Uh, I've got some plans. I'm working on some very crude drawings to get over to uh, people much better and smarter than I am at uh, actually drawing everything up. I'm missing a screw. Holy but. I shoot this thing so much, and I just now notice that. See? My lace is falling apart. Anyhow, thanks for staying around till the end. Be on the lookout uh, sometime next year for the Chiapa muzzle brake. And might be carrying some of their stuff sooner than that. We'll see. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking out. Get outside. Get shooting. And God bless you and yours. <laughs>